I believe I am soul. I really believe in the power of astrology. I believe that we have lived before. The belief I have in universal truth and universal consciousness. I believe that God exists. Spiritual belief of psychic power. Uttering the name of God, uh, one purifies one's consciousness. God is now. I have seen angels. You know, Jesus Christ uh, was and is the Son of God. It's literally a light transmission. Sixth sense. Jesus came. Legitimate miracles. Hypnosis is the belief that God is the author that of our consciousness. Just that our beliefs create our reality. ask you about one belief that's important to you. Okay. I'm going to ask you how you know about the belief. I'm going to try to ask you good questions. Sometimes I do well, sometimes I don't succeed, but I'm going to do my best. Sometimes I'll answer well, sometimes I won't. We're all on the same page then. Do you happen to have a belief you wish to discuss? I do. I believe there is no death. So by no death, you mean? The physical body, yes. The spirit, no. So... There are ways that we survive our death. Yes. That would be that I think that um, extraterrestrials are real and they're here to help us. What do you mean when you think or describe or believe in God? Um, I, I think of Jesus and I do believe that he, Jesus died for our sins. I do believe in God, but I feel like God doesn't really care what religion anybody is. So if I could rephrase the belief, just so it makes it easier for us to talk about, that you believe in God, but you don't believe in a specific religion. Right. We are our own savior. We are our own savior, yes. gotcha. Yeah, with so much going on in the world, it's just like, by now, I feel like we should have had a helping hand. You know, um, so when you say we're our own savior, are you saying that we're here to rescue ourselves and there's no higher power to do that? Is that what you're saying? Yes, in a sense. We are the higher power. Well, one of my beliefs is that I chose to come back here as who I am and where I am. You chose to come back here as who you are and where you are. Correct. Okay. How, how, tell me more about the belief, because how did you do that? Um, I believe that because it's intuition and it's um, what I've been studying and listening to for the past 25 years. And I believe we choose our next life. And I, I don't believe that, you know, I believe I can come back at, as many different things throughout lifetimes. So you believe in, I guess, is it re reincarnation. reincarnation? Okay. Correct. But gender is more binary than what the patriarchy has created. Let's say that. The gender, that is gender less is less binary. Thank you. Okay. I'm like, we're that, using words. Okay. That gender is less binary than what the patri patriarchy has intended. Yes. On a scale from one to seven, how confident are you that this belief is true? Seven? One to seven? Seven. On a scale from one to seven, let's say, mm -hmm. how confident are you that this belief is true? Seven. I can just say what is true for me. So from what and so I'm very, I feel very confident. I'm like at a ten with what I believe for me. So you're a ten out of seven, which you believe for you. On a scale from one to seven, how confident are you that this belief is true? Mm. 
One to seven, I would say a seven. On a scale from one to seven, how confident are you that your belief is true and real? I would say seven. On a scale from one to seven, how confident are you that your belief is true? I'm at a solid six right now. I don't know, I feel good about this. <laughs> On a scale from one to seven, how confident are you that this belief is true, true and real? Um, I would say a 5.5 to 5. a six. 5. Fairly confident, but not extremely I, I have confident questions. all the way. Right, I do, you know, yeah. have questions. Yeah. And on a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? How, how important is it for me to believe in true things? In things that are true and in real. Things that are true things that you believe in. How important is it for you to believe in those a things? A seven. On yeah. a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? In things true that are true things. and real. Oh, it's very important for me to believe in true things. And on a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? Things that are true and real. Seven. And on a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? Things that are true and real. Seven. And on a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? Um, seven. How do you know your belief is true? Intuition and, and just feelings, finding, searching. How do you know that your belief is true? Um, through experience and uh, taking in frequency and energy from those beings and having a kind of a direct connection with them. And it's, it's almost that ineffable thing that you can't really explain. It's more of a feeling than it is seeing and hearing. You know, it's not quite the senses that we're used to. It's more of an intuitive gut feeling. How do you know your belief is true? Uh, well, the main reason is my experiences. Ex my personal, personal experience. experiences, yes. I see. Yeah. So <laughs> I know, you know, based off of personal experiences, I feel like I can speak to my beliefs because of those, those things. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you telling me. I think I really get a good sense of how you believe the belief. Thank you. I'm going to ask you some questions about the belief. George. Let's say George is sitting next to you. And let's say George, instead of Jesus, George believes in Allah. And he believes Allah is God because of personal experience, because of the book, Quran, and other reasons. And let's say I see you and George talking, and I just want to know what's true, what's real in the world. How can I find out what's true, which belief is true? more objectively real hearing you and George talk? I honestly, I feel like it, it goes back to those personal experiences and they could equally be as objective. Timmy, let's say. Timmy's sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. And Timmy has, hasn't had that experience that you have. You've had mm -hmm. this really strong connection with extraterrestrial beings mm -hmm. and aliens and he just hasn't had that experience and I'm a third person I'm sitting there and I'm watching you and Timmy talk mm -hmm. I'm sorry. and I just want to know what's real and true mm -hmm. objectively true in the world mm -hmm. is there a way I'm not sure that there is it because I think it's subjective I think it's what's true for me is not necessarily what's true for you your experience here is different than mine so I'm a little confused about something so help okay. me out Truth is very important to you. And let's say Tammy, for whatever reason, has the opposite belief you have. She believes that there is no creator God or anything like that. And you believe there is. Yeah. Could we say that one person's closer to a truth, the objective truth, or the other person's closer to objective truth, or both are equally true and real? Well, I think that, I think it's equally true because I cannot tell her what is right. Let's suppose that Missy is sitting next to you. Uh -huh. And Missy hasn't had the same experience you have with the gut feelings of reincarnation and feeling that is true. She, doesn't ha she hasn't had that. Yep. 
And she believes, this is Missy talking, she believes that it's not a thing, that we, we don't have reincarnation. We, don't, we haven't had past lives. We're not going to have future lives. This is what she believes. I'm a third person, and I just want to know what's true and real in the world. If it's true, I want to believe it. If it's not true, I don't want to believe it. How could I find out, with you and Missy talking together, what's objectively true? Well, I don't think you could find out from us talking because that's not going to happen. But I think that if you did a past life regression and went with an open mind, that you would find past lives that yeah. resonate with you. So if I did like a past, if, sorry, if Missy did like a past life regression and, and what if she did all that, I'm just saying, and she didn't, she just still didn't have that experience, that personal experience or that gut feeling. Would we be in a spot to say that our that both beliefs are equally true, or one's maybe more closer to the objective truth, and the or the other might be more cl closer to the objective truth about what's real? What I believe, I've been taught, and yeah. I've been I've been you know uh, spiritually involved with, right. with the communities, and and yeah, you know what I what I learn and what I've experienced sure. is true for me. So everybody has a different truth. Oh, okay, well, that maybe we should back up then. <laughs> so everybody has a different truth, you're saying? So your truth may not be my truth. Are you saying that everybody has a different experience or everybody right. has a different truth? Everybody has a different experience and what they believe is true it does that may relate? not be true for someone else. Can we both have different truths and they both be true? Yes. Okay. So I have this pouch of cricket bites that you can have after we're done. Awesome. I Would you like hungry. some? Because no one's taken me up on this yet. I've had crickets. There are, let's say, an even or odd number of crickets in this pouch. Okay. I might not know the answer. I presume you don't know the answer. I'm pretty sure I don't. But could it, could it be said that there's an objective truth there? That either there's an even or odd number of crickets and it doesn't matter what we believe about it. It's yep. just true? Because it is, right? Yeah. It is. In the case of your belief, could we say that your belief, and I don't pretend to have the answer, but either we live on as a, and we come back and as a different person, could we say that either that is something that's objectively true or it's something that's not objectively true and it doesn't matter what we believe about it, either it's true or not true? Okay, so we need to go back on that question. So I'm not exactly sure what so everybody has their own opinion uh -huh. right and everybody has a truth like what you believe is true so everybody has their own opinion and i think opinion. you said everybody has their own truth. truth so what's true for you may not be true for me if I, can i believe that there's an even number of crickets if you can believe an, that if but, but if i don't there, know the right answer if there's an <laughs> odd number of crickets is my belief true until you're proven differently, I would say yes. Does me counting the number of crickets in this pouch, does this change the number of crickets in this pouch? No. So could it be said then that there's an even or odd number of crickets in this pouch and it doesn't matter whether I count it or not? Yeah. With your belief, let's say Tanya is sitting next to you. Okay. And Tanya, for whatever reason, doesn't believe what you believe. She doesn't believe the belief. Right. And I have no dog in the fight. I just want to believe what's true. If your belief is true, I'd like to believe that. If her belief is true, I'd rather believe that. I want to believe in something that's true. Hearing you and Tanya discuss your beliefs, is there any way I could find that out? Like, what is objectively true? What's true for you ends up being your truth. So if Tanya and I have this discussion and neither one of these things ring true to you, then it's not your truth. If it's my personal truth, true to me, mm. that there are an odd number of crickets in this pouch, how does that make it true if there's an even number of crickets in this pouch? Now that I do not know the answer to. <laughs> Fair enough. But now I'm learning that my truth might be different from other people's, but that doesn't make theirs any different or less or worse. Their whole life is different. Oh, 
well, this helps me. Uh-huh. So you're thinking the way you see the world is, is that you have a, your truth, your personal truth, and someone else might have their own personal truth. Yeah. After this, you can keep this box if you want. These are, uh, these are sour cream and onion crickets. Oh, no. If you want, they're pretty good, actually. I'm vegan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let's say, let's suppose that there is either an even or odd number of crickets in this box. Yes. I don't know what the truth is. I presume you don't know what the truth is. But could it be said that there's an objective truth there and that truth doesn't require what we believe about it? It's just true? That's if you believe that we're constantly in the same, like, dimension of things. So I could believe that there's an even number of crickets. Yeah. And you could believe that there's an odd number of crickets. Yeah. And both would be true. Whoever believes in themselves more. (laughs) Whoever believes it harder is true. Is that that what you're saying? Maybe. Like, who believes they're going to be right? It seems like if I believe that there's an even number of crickets and you believe that there's an odd number of crickets, that that they're both true? They could be both true, right? How is that? There's a possibility of either truth being there. How would we find that truth? Um, Well, we would have to look. So there's a test Mm -hmm. and we can count them. We can count those. So then after we count them, it sounds like what you're saying, then there's actually an objective truth. Mm Mm-hmm. There's either an even or odd number of crickets. We'll have an answer, yeah. We'll have an answer. How can we have personal truths then? Because even and odd is still something people made up. Go on. I don't know. Even the terminology even and odd. Maybe I call even something different in some other world. So I think what you're telling me then mm-hmm. is that there, regardless of a test... I could believe there's an even number of crickets. You could believe there's an odd number of crickets, mm-hmm. and both would be true. Yes. Do you see these box of larva snacks? I do. And you can have these after if you want. Ooh. <laughs> is this a sales pitch for larva snacks? It is. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that there is either an even or, or odd number of larva snacks in this box. Sure. I don't know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. I presume you don't know what the truth is. But could it be said that there is an objective truth that doesn't matter what we think about it? Yes. So there's an objective answer there. There is. How is your belief about extraterrestrial beings different from whether there's an even or odd number of larva snacks? For me, it isn't. For me, it's objective, right? But again... I understand that something that is maybe paranormal or there's a a, not a way to actually bring that to the forefront without a bunch of fear surrounding it without. So you say for me, it's objective. If I say for me, it's objective that there Mm -hmm. is an odd number of larva snacks in here when there is an even number of larva snacks Mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. You think correct? Um, I, yeah, I would say it's correct. So if there's an odd number of larva snacks, and I believe that there's an even number of larva snacks, then there really is an even number of larva snacks. I mean, if you, uh, there could be half in there. I guess, I guess, I see what you're, you're trying to almost debate, right? No. No? I, I want to know how you, I'm really not in debate. I want to know how you know what you know. Right. And it's so a, it's not a solid, there's not a solid thing I can hold in my hand about it like you can with this box of larva snacks that I will decline. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, there's not a solid physical evidence of it. But I don't need physical evidence either of this other thing because of a direct experience of feeling. Are you telling me that you have a strong belief in something which there is no evidence for i think they're the only evidence is on the inside so it's difficult to share that with someone else yeah i mean there is i guess evidence that has is coming to light but physical evidence but yeah it's more of an interior belief that's what a belief is right there's a crack in the door so if you believe something it's not it's not objectively true and you can have this packet after i'm this pouch (laughs) after i'm finished this is a spicy cayenne cricket bites 
And if you'd like them, you can have this. That's okay. I don't eat spicy cayenne, so. Oh, but you eat cricket bites. I, I have another flavor. Either. I don't I, I do either. Okay. <laughs> Let's suppose there's either an even or odd number of cricket bites in this pouch. Okay. I don't know what the answer is. I assume you don't know what the answer is, but could it be said that there is an answer there, either an even or odd number? Yes. Okay. In the case of your belief, could we say with past life and future lives that either it's an objectively real thing, it's a true thing that is true about the world or it's not? It is, can we say that about your belief? Yes, I believe it, it's true about the world. I believe that everybody's been somewhere before. So your belief you're saying is an objectively true belief? Yes. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. If I can, what if I believe to my core that there is an even number of crickets in this pouch? Uh -huh. And I believe that it is an objective truth. It's a truth about the world. It's my belief, and I believe that it is true. That there is an even, did I say even? Even number of crickets in this pouch. Let's suppose, just for the purposes of this conversation, that in reality, there's an odd number. How could I find that out? Open up the pack. <laughs> Open up, there's a test, I could count it. Yes. Count the crickets. Yes. With your belief, and I know you believe it very strongly. If there was a chance, and I'm not saying this is the case, that your belief was not correct, it could very well be correct, but I'm saying if it wasn't, what test, how would you be able to know that your belief was incorrect if it was incorrect? Only when I die and figure, and that's the only way I'm gonna know. So there's no, you know, you there's, no, there's no on the earth thing, you know, that's gonna say you're right or wrong. So it seems like with there's, your belief is not really a test that we could do. Correct. So I know you believe your belief from one to seven on, right. at a seven, right. you're, you're confident at a seven. I know seven is about as, to, is about as high as you can go. But if we could even get you higher on that scale, like 7.5, how could or we do 10. that? How could we get you higher, well, more I've confident I've, in that I've belief? I've experienced it, so it's experiential for me. So I've, I've left my body, met whatever you want to call it, that up there. So I know, I know for me, I know that that's true. So you're at a seven, I know that's about as high as it gets, but if we get you even higher to 7.5, you'd have you'd probably even more experiences like that and you'd even be more confident about the belief. Right. Let's think about the other way. Is there anything that you could learn that would get you from a seven to a 6.999 in your confidence level of the belief? No? No, because I've experienced it. If I had, I think maybe if I hadn't had the experience, because yeah. everything's experiential. So if you've not never had the experience and you're listening to other people talk, well, you haven't experienced it, right? So you don't know for sure. It could be a little bit that mm, I don't know if that's true, but but for me, no, I know. Back in the beginning, we said you said that you believe the belief at a five and a half out of seven. How can we get you to a six? How could we make? How could you be more confident that your belief is true? Uh, I think. Just living through life, and when I get older, I can speak to that more and get get up to that six. Just based on, you know, having more life experiences, things like that. That's that's how I feel. Do so you think more life experiences might get you from a five and a half to six? Yeah. Let me ask you this: What do you think? would lower your confidence in the belief from a five and a half to say a 5.4, just like that, a 0 0.1? What would lower it? I don't know. I'm not sure. I find um, that interesting. That there are certain scenarios, certain life experiences that you could have that would increase the confidence of your belief. 
but I think you're telling me that you can't think of a con- that you can't. And, th- and they haven't all. And my life experiences have not all been positive. Yeah. You know. Mine either. <laughs> right, right. So there have been like negative things. I'm trying to understand, like, I get how you'd be more confident in the, become more confident in the belief, like, more life experiences, and I think you're telling me experiences to confirm to you that the belief is true. Is there certain disconfirming things that could happen? If your belief would become less confident, what kind of thing would make it less confident? And maybe it wouldn't become less confident. I don't know. I, I, I could go back to, like, during the times maybe when I've had, like, negative things. Yeah, negative things Negative happen. things happen at that moment. Yeah. It feels like my faith has kind of, like, yeah, I see. gone down a little bit. But then over time, you know, after healing, you, I gain a better understanding that okay well I wouldn't be where I'm at today yeah if I wouldn't have gone through this because everything even you and I speaking right now it was supposed to happen so So, let me ask you this that you feel confident that your belief is true at a 10 at a a 10 out of 7 what would make you more confident in the belief that your belief is true what would make how could we even get you to an 11 out of 7 what could we do to make you even more confident that you're Well, for me, those kinds of things happen every day. You know, um, uh, you know, it's it's the path that I'm on that every day something else unfolds to, to make me realize that I am on the right path. So there's it more things that feels, confirm to you yes, that it's true. It's an ongoing thing. There won't be like one big dramatic moment that seals it for me. Well, let me ask you this then. You're at a 10 out of 7. What would reduce your confidence in the belief? Maybe bring you down to a 9.99 out of 7? Hmm. That's a good question. To something to shake my belief? Just um, 9.9. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't. I'd have to really think about that. I, I just can't think of anything at this moment that would disrupt my belief or be a bump in the road for me i i'd have to really think about what would shake my because i mean i've been through some pretty you know harrowing life experiences and i've had to come to terms with some difficult things so i thought well if i've been through that and it didn't shake my belief then i can't imagine what else it would take at the very beginning of the conversation i asked you how confident are you in the belief and you said a six out of seven yeah are you still a six out of seven? What will make you more confident in your belief? How can we get you to a seven out of seven? I'm always going to ponder other sides because that's just who I am. So I'm never going to be 100% about anything, I think. Is there any way we can get you to a 6.1? Sure. What kind of information would help you get there, do you think? Um, I think if I were more confident in any of the science of it, like human development and such. With the science. Yeah, like the actual physical vessel, the body. Yeah. Would the science matter if we all believe what is true is true? Not necessarily, because even scientists are just out there testing each other's theories. It's not all, it's not truth either until it's, you know, proven right or wrong, and then it's proven wrong again and right again. Can you prove things that are right or wrong in a world that, are, that has either simultaneously and even an odd number of crickets? I don't think so. What would reduce your confidence in your belief from a six to say a 5.9? I also don't think it could be reduced. I don't know. Let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's useful, generally speaking, to have a belief, any belief at all, that can't be shown to be incorrect, if it's incorrect, I'm not saying your belief isn't correct, but do you think it's useful to have a belief that can't be shown to be incorrect? Because if a belief can't be shown to be incorrect, then how do we really know that it's true? Well, you can ask it a different way too. If we know something is true, how do we know it's wrong? You know, like it false. I don't know. I feel like, say that again, because it I'll sounded- say it again. Yeah. If we have a belief, yeah. and there's no way that 
Timmy sitting next to the, if I have this belief and Timmy couldn't show me that it's wrong if it's right. wrong, yeah. and I couldn't even show myself it's wrong if it's wrong, yeah. it seems like I'm stuck with the belief because right. there's no way I could ever believe otherwise. Might as well believe it's true. Why? <laughs> well, I think that I, I've been taught to kind of follow my gut. So if it sparks joy, right? Not if to use what? that, not to use that phrase, but um, I've been taught, for instance, by my father because he believes in a lot of esoteric things, aliens, everything. And he's like, I read things and I will follow what I feel in my body feels true. Is what I believe feel and what I feel in my body in this yes. case, in, in your belief that we discussed at the beginning. Is that a reliable way, do you think, to know what is true? Well, it's a, definitely not reliable right now because we don't know how to use our energy the way we should. Like, we don't have our focus. Like, if I, I changed my focus to a lot of negative things, to a lot of positive things, and my world has changed completely. So we do create our world by these outlooks and those beliefs because if we believe, like, if I only follow things that make me happy or other people happy, with, of course, being healthy with that, I am no longer inviting in those lower vibrations where I was at, where I was not creating joy. And if there's an odd number of crickets in this box, and I believe that there's an even number of crickets in that box, can I make that happen? You can. <laughs> Is it useful to have a belief that can't be shown to be incorrect if it's incorrect? I don't know if it's incorrect, but if it happened to be incorrect. Is it useful to have a belief that can't be shown to be incorrect because if a belief can't be shown to be incorrect, then how do we really know that it's true? Well, I guess it depends on the belief. Again, with the crickets, that can be shown different. But if it's uh, something esoteric or, you know, spiritual, that's something you just either you choose to believe it or you choose not to believe it. So you're saying with the crickets is something that we can count. Because you can see it. And with something that's spiritual, it's something that we can't count. Something, it's a, it's a, it's a faith. And what do we mean by faith? Faith is believing in something you can't see. So faith is believing in something that we can't see or we can't know? You can feel can't feel I mean you can know it but it's not knowing as in human knowing it's just a knowing it's a higher knowing because we all have higher selves you just need to be in tune with your you're the saying that we know it just you know it. because we know it but not with evidence that we know it right I see how do we know things that we don't know you have a higher, you have a soul's calling, and as you become more in tune, meditation, different spiritual practices, you become more in tune with what your soul's calling you to do. So you have to be still and be quiet, which is very hard for most people, be included. <laughs> and if Sarah doesn't know that, and she's sitting next to you, and Sarah doesn't know that. And you know that. And I know you know that. Right. How do we all really know that? So you just need to listen to the, the, your, your soul and your, your and higher Sarah self. Sarah says... There's not one. Yeah. Yeah. That's Sarah's belief. It's not, yeah. I, I mean, I can, you know, we can all talk to we're blue in the face. If they're not going to believe it, they're not going to believe it. And it's sure. not, you just sure. can live by example. So it seems like that when it comes to your belief and it's at a seven and it said that you said that you're likely not going to go to a 6.999 for you. Probably not. So I think what you're telling me is that this belief is with you. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So it sounds like it's a strong belief you have, and you know it to be true, but it's difficult to explain someone, mm -hmm. to show evidence for how you know what you know. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking. Generally. Just generally speaking. Is it useful, do you think, to have a belief, any belief, mm -hmm. 
that can't be shown to be incorrect, if it's incorrect, not saying it's incorrect, but sure. if it's incorrect. Because if a belief can't be shown to be incorrect, if it's incorrect, then how do we really know that it's true? Well, I would say that it doesn't really matter because one, I'm not trying to make anyone else believe it. And two, if it promotes a feeling of unity for me with other people, then I'm going to keep it. Just a good psychological yeah. reason for you to have the belief. Right. Generally speaking, just generally speaking about any belief, do you think it's useful to have a belief, any belief, that can't be shown to be incorrect if it's incorrect? I'm not saying it's incorrect, but if it's incorrect. Do you think it's useful to have a belief that can't be shown to be incorrect? Mm -hmm. Because if a belief can't be shown to be incorrect, then how do we really know that it's true? If it can't be shown. There's no way that a belief can be shown to be incorrect. Yeah. Well, then I have to back up to my original how do we know thought, that it's true? saying that what difference does it make as long as it works for the person? That would be my answer. Okay. Yeah. So, doesn't make any difference. So it doesn't make any difference. No, because if that's working for that individual, gotcha. then let it keep working. I don't. That's why I started out saying that, you know, if you want to talk about religion, one religion is not more true. One religion is not better as long as it's working for that person or group and it's not hurting anyone. I think that's important. <laughs> so at the yeah. very beginning of the talk, I asked you on a scale from one to seven, how important is it for you to believe in true things? Yes. Do you want to reduce your number then? No, because I don't feel like it's justifiable to believe in something that has been shown not to be true. You know, it, it, it's either true or it's not. And if there's been science or something to disprove your belief, I think you have to back it up a little bit and rethink it to make sure either confirm that you still believe it or have a reason to doubt it. So I'm not that stubborn, but some things are going to depend on your faith that can never be disproven, I guess. I don't know. Is it useful, do you think, and please just tell me what you think, is it useful to have a belief, any belief, any belief at all, that can't be shown to be incorrect if it's incorrect? Yes. Because if a belief can't be shown to be incorrect, then how do we really know that it's true? I don't think it really matters. I think that it's what you believe. Yeah. And your belief is your belief. And, you know, I'm not going to run around and tell sure. you that you're wrong or, you know, you have to believe this. Yeah. yeah. And again, it might not matter. And, and we're not telling other people what to believe. Exactly. I get it. So you're saying that it's okay to believe even if that belief might not be true. Well, I believe it's true, <laughs> you know, so it's hard for me to say, say that, you know, because my experiences in, in my life have, have taught me that, yes, that's true. And, you know, it, it's... If it wasn't true... And I'm I just, wouldn't I, know. You wouldn't know. No. So it seems like this belief is with you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Last question. Okay. If, hypothetically, you woke up tomorrow morning and didn't have this belief, would you be the same person? Would you be a different person? How would, that, how would you be different? How would your life be different? Well, I feel like my life would be, if, if I didn't have these belief, this belief, um, I feel like I would struggle, you know. Yeah. This this belief yeah, serves was, a very important part of your life. I get it. Right. I get it. Right. I would struggle through life and I wouldn't have as much of an optimistic outlook. Yeah. You know? I get it. Yeah, I, I Yeah. I can see especially with your father and how this belief really I can see belief, a belief like this and belief, beliefs like this, that you get up in the day and there's, it gives you a purpose and it gives you an explanation, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I get it. 
I do. What do you think? Well, about beliefs in general. This is how I see beliefs. And thank you for asking. You're the only one that's ever asked me. I want to believe in true things, and I'd rather not believe in false things. If something is true, I'd really like to believe it. And if something is not true, I'd rather not. And that's part of the reason why I talk to people like you is that if someone is telling me a true belief, I really want to know. I won't really want to know how they well, how they know what they know. And I find that just asking, "What do you believe?" I don't get to know that. And so that's why I ask, "Why and how?" And with those questions, I'm thinking maybe I'm getting closer to what's real and true. What do you think? I I absolutely agree. Cool. Yeah. 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 If your belief wasn't true, not saying that's the case, but if it wasn't true, would you want to know it? Yes, definitely, definitely. Because why? Because I'm here, I'm on this earth, I'm in this life for me first and then for the collective. So, I not, like I said, I'm 24 years old and I just turned 24. I got a long life ahead of me. I want to be able to grow into the best me that I can. I want to experience all of me and I need the truth to do that. I don't want to build this me off of lies I don't, or off of delusions or no, no, no. I need truth. I need to stand in my authentic self. Yeah. That's, that's what my teachings and my studies is all about. Being your truest self in this moment. I get it. In this moment. I get it. And You're not good being man. afraid. You're a good man. I try to be, man. Yeah. <laughs> I try to be. I'm going to ask you this question. I don't know. I, start, I know I already said that I was going to ask you. That was the last question, but I really enjoy this talk. I'm going to ask you one more question. What's the solution? We're in a difficult time right now in our country. we got people who believe diametrically opposed things. And... Those people who believe di diametrically opposed things really believe those diametrically opposed things to their core. To the core, like they'll fight to the death for it. What's the answer? <laughs> um, what's the answer? Gosh, it's like I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for somebody to ask me this for a long time. <laughs> what's the answer? What's the solution? I don't... I, I'm not saying for you to go at it and just, once I present it to you, this is how you need to be from this point on. I'm not saying that because you always have a choice. And since you always have a choice, and with me and knowing that, all I ask, all I ask is for you to open up. Open up your heart, open up your mind. And see the alternatives. Because what we have now, you see what we got. You know what I'm saying? We, we can be more. I know you feel it, and I know you feel it. I definitely feel it. We can be more. But in order, in order for us to get there, in order, for, in order for us to do more, you just got to become, what is it? Like, full of wonder again. Mis mystery. Like, I like, that. like a little kid. I like that. Like a little kid. Thank you. You're welcome, world. Thank you so much for that talk. I really do. Love Thank you much. You're welcome. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. That was dope. That was, <laughs> that was good. That was my favorite one today. That was a good one. And I really mean it. I love it.